Welcome to the Epic Company Culture Podcast, where your host, Josh Sweeney, will give you, the business leaders, HR professionals, and company culture aficionados, the knowledge you need to take your company culture to the next level. Hello, my name is Josh Sweeney, and welcome to the Epic Company Culture Podcast. Before I get started, I would like to thank Prototype Prime for this amazing podcast space. This is part of our Culture Champion series. I'm joined here by Jeff Katz of Definition 6. Jeff, thanks for joining us. Uh, it's great to be here, Josh. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. So to kick us off, tell us a little bit about yourself and Definition 6. Yeah, so um, I, I feel like uh, Atlanta's now my home. I've been here for 20 years, and um, I, I just uh, love the city. And then I get another opportunity. Part of our company is also headquartered in New York. And so I kind of get the best best of both worlds. Yeah, uh, go back and back and forth between the two two great cities all the time. And uh, at Definition Six, we have clients all over the country, uh, a couple international uh, clients and partners. Uh, so I uh, love to travel, love to spend time with our people, uh, grow companies, businesses, and um, and that's what we're about at Definition Six. Yeah, I like that you picked another spot on the East Coast instead of having to go all the way back out West for everything, but how's that work for you? It definitely happened purposefully. Okay. <laughs> there, there was a moment, and um, we knew we, there, were, there was a moment where we were going to do an acquisition to be a larger agency, a, a national agency. Mm -hmm. You either have to be in New York or L.A., and thinking about it, it made the conscious decision to uh, grow our business continued on the on the East Coast. Yeah, I'm sure that's a lot better yeah. on the travel for everybody. It, it, it definitely is. When you have uh, a flight every hour on the hour to LaGuardia, it makes right. it pretty easy. What is it, two hours, two and a half yeah, hours? Yeah, exactly. Up there? Pretty quick. <laughs> awesome. So I like to start off with some experiences from before Definition 6, before yeah. your current company. So from a culture perspective, company culture perspective, uh, what was a, an amazing culture that you worked for beforehand and kind of how that played into building definition six sure I, I I like to take experiences from everywhere I am and so I think about it as I've been with some pretty different even though my career at definition six has been really long and that feels like a five different six different companies um, prior to definition six I grew up in an entrepreneurial family. I grew up in a family business. And in that business, I, I learned at the dinner table. Um, I learned at the office working with my dad. I learned about really how to treat people, how to be focused and make really tough decisions when you're running a family business. So from that environment, I've also worked in a startup environment. In that, I've learned chaos and <laughs> transparency <laughs> is probably my biggest takeaways. Uh, from that business. And what I mean by that is, I mean, you know, living in the chaos, oh, and there's yeah. good and bad chaos, yeah. and uh, learning how to manage that. And then the transparency side, coming from a family business that's pretty typically pretty close, close to the vest, mm -hmm. in a startup, I learned how to be transparent. Like, we shared everything. We had to coach, we had to coach young people early on if we win a big piece of business or we think we're going to take this company public, don't go buy a car. You know? right. And if you hear we lost a, a client or something, don't go look for a job. Right. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. So and there I really learned how to be transparent. And then uh, the third one was a large publicly traded uh, company. And there I learned how to do that. You can do long range planning. <laughs> that uh, you can put programs in place, you can really develop people, develop clients over a longer period of time because you have the resources to do that. So those are those are my positive takeaways. Yeah, so you had the first experience. one. You had the first one, which is kind of close to your vest, the family experience. Yeah. I'm guessing giving the the time that you may have grown up in, it's like, you know, if you're not paying the bill, don't look at the don't look at the bill kind of thing <laughs> from your parents. I don't know if you experienced yeah, yeah. that, but very close to the vest, right? Yeah. Financially. Uh, and then <laughs> and then you have uh, the startup, which I, right. I, the the whole aspect around training around transparency. I mean, I think that's something people forget. A lot of people want transparency, but yeah, if you're about to win a big deal, you can't buy a new car until the money's in your pocket. Yeah. And because you lose a deal, you don't want people running off and being worried about getting new jobs. So the training aspect of that's definitely crucial. So 
while you were speaking, you mentioned definition six was almost like five different companies. And I'm assuming that's through acquisitions and growth and, and just other pivotal changes. How has the culture changed from, what has it been, 18 years or something like exactly, this? Yeah. Okay. So how has it changed from 18 years ago through those pivots? What would you say the culture was then and, and what did you really become now? Yeah, so it, and actually we celebrated our uh, 20th anniversary a year ago. Okay. So um, we're we're going into 22. I nice. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so the culture, I would say the biggest thing and what I'm proud most of about our culture today is this change uh, that I'll share with you, is that the culture, we used to feel it was management's job to build the culture and uh, to manufacture the culture. And now it is 100% our people and our clients' culture. It's like, and, and I love it. I mean, I just, I, I just where, where our people are taking the company and where they, where they want to go. Obviously, my job is to make sure we stay focused and keeping the guard, guardrails and everything right. like that. And, but uh, really, that's the, the biggest change. And there are things that we did many years ago that I'm really happy that are, are still there. I'm sad that some things have left, but it's not my culture. It's the company's culture. What are some of those examples of things that you're happy that persisted? Um, so uh, one is, um, and and this one kind of have control because I take my two dogs to work pretty regularly. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, but um, uh, we have a, a very strong dog culture, and that kind of that extended to our New York office. Uh, it's very hard to find a, a landlord that's open to that. And uh, hopefully our landlord isn't listening to this podcast right now. <laughs> we right. just decided not to talk about okay. it. <laughs> and, and there are a couple dogs that, yeah, that it's yeah. extended into our New York office. Uh, but it, it's really it's really fun and it adds a lot to the culture and the prof- actually the professionalism around people and things like uh, one of my favorite things about dogs that uh, dogs in the office that people don't think about is dogs have no idea what teams work together, what projects people are on. And when you your dog leads you to another part of the office that you may not be working with that person, you build a relationship with them. Yeah. People just, you know, so it's like an instant, you know, collaboration and getting people to know each other and, and work together where they may not be on the same projects. So that's, that's one. Um, they're just social gatherings and things. Uh, we've, uh, our team... Um, it's one thing to uh, break bread together. It's another to cook for each other. Okay. And so we've had this potluck uh, dinner before Thanksgiving every year that we do. And, uh, I mean, we've been doing it for years, and it's great, and it just grows and grows and grows. And people, I mean, they just love to come up with their creations and cook with each other. Last Friday, um, the president of our organization did uh, flap, flap, Flapjack Friday. Okay. So, you know, Breakfast, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, doing, doing things like that. Um, the, the, we look at their different tiers. I mean, there are different pillars that our teams focus on. And from a philanthropic side, I mean, the, you know, we're at, uh, we're at the food bank and then we're doing something, you know, for dogs and, and kids and STEM education. And, and it's all organic. And these groups of individuals come together and these, this is what we want to support. And everybody knows that, one, we're a business, so we can't just support everything. And we have, you know, over 100 employees, so we're, we're going to have to make decisions of what we support and when we support it and things like that. Th- those are the areas that I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go back to the Makes breaking sense. bread. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, we've talked about it multiple times on this show how, you know, it's not just about the event. It's about yep. getting people together and finding ways to build those bonds. And I just want to share with our fellow culturists out there that, you know, there's breaking bread together and going to a restaurant, but you went one step further where you're cooking for each other. And for those who like to cook, I like to cook, you know, that's almost like a gift, right? When I make something that I really enjoy and hope others enjoy yep. and, you know, they like it. I mean, that's a gift in a whole new way and you get to break bread together. So that's a really unique example that I haven't yeah. heard before. We uh, broke a record this year. We've, we've had so much growth this year. I uh, had to deep fry six turkeys. 
to feed that's, everybody. <laughs> that's a lot of turkey. <laughs> and I'm assuming you're not freezing it like the rest of us at the no, end no, of the no. at the end of the day no. <laughs> to eat in some other fashion. No. Uh, so talking about breaking records, uh, I believe you've broken a record for awards. Did you get a you got a few awards this year, right? We did. This was a big award season for us. Uh, we had twenty, I think, twenty four awards, and that's span from our client industry awards to our industry awards, uh, Emmys, Can Lions, uh, Clio's, Tele Awards, and um, we're uh, finalists for uh, in the National Home Builder Association. I, and I, I love I love all the our industry awards, uh-huh. uh, but my my favorite are when our clients are winning awards for the work that we've we've you know that we've done in their industry. So you take home building. Right. And we're being recognized by the home building industry, not the advertising industry. I love all awards, but those are really special. Yeah, definitely cross function and yeah. help somebody else out to get their awards. And just to kind of recap on that, I mean, 24 awards out of how many and, and how many employees do you have total about? Well, we'll call it 120, 130. Okay, so 100, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. 24 awards for a 130 person company. That's a that's a high ratio. <laughs> yeah. I know a lot bigger companies with a lot less awards, so that's got to be yeah. um, energizing to you. And they're competitive. The The run of, of Emmy Awards that we've had is just unbelievable. And that's what makes – I mean, it really builds the culture. I mean, we have – analysts and artists and you know voiceover people and filming people and social media writers and i mean just uh, software developers all of these different people come together and collaborate to just uh, build unbelievable experiences for our clients yeah and that's what the, they're there for right yeah. i mean that's what culture has to be around is is around the work and do you find talking about about the work i mean is that award culture kind of embedded into the organization where they can really showcase their, that work. So they get to showcase the work, they get to see the achievement and it's some public recognition all in one. Yeah, without a doubt. But one thing about our culture is we're not, we don't go after work to win awards. Mm-hmm. We do great work that gets recognized. Yeah. Right. And there's a very big difference. And so our clients, if, um, I mean, we're we're doing the best work we can do for our, for our clients, and if our if our marketing group or our, everything gets gets uh, recognized and we win awards, that's great. So I think we did some good work this year. Do great work, yep. win awards. Yeah, right, <laughs> got it. <laughs> and they will fall in, and you'll yeah. have a twenty four to one hundred and twenty ratio, whatever right. that breaks yeah, down yeah, to. Yeah, right? it's, it's pretty strong. <laughs> Another kind of ratio uh, that happened this year is we had, uh, well, I'll, I'll go to, I like numbers. So we had uh, 14 people that were promoted this year, which, you know, so almost 15% of the company yeah. uh, had experienced promotions, uh, which, uh, which is very exciting. The other is we paid out more in referral bonuses than we ever have this year. That's a great record to set. Yeah. So you're finding the re- referral platform into your organization. Is is that a good uh, – so it sounds like it's a solid driver of revenue for you. Yeah, so it's two things. So I was referring to um, client, to, uh, to employee. Oh, okay. Um, gotcha. You know, um, attribution of, you know, of, of uh, attracting uh, talent. Okay. Uh, but the same thing goes is that um, our biggest – our biggest pipeline for new clients actually is um, employee referrals as well. And we talk about that. We've talked about that for years is that, you know, would, would you recommend us to your, to your family? Would you be happy if your family's business was working with definition six? And obviously if that's, I mean, that's, a, <laughs> yeah. that's pretty important, right? High satisfaction score. Yeah, exactly. Um, but um, the, the uh, referral bonus that I was talking about was actually referring your friends to come work for us. Yeah, which really tells talent. tells the tale on whether they're enjoying their role. Yeah, right. So on that, do you have a certain philosophy that you use? I know, you know, we've I've spoken to people who, you know, they give two hundred and fifty dollar referrals, and then we have other people here in Atlanta who've uh, you know talked about. I'm more than they're more than willing to give a ten thousand dollar referral bonus because they use recruiters and it'll cost them even way more. So sure. what's your what's your referral program look like? What's your ideology on that? Yeah, so we're, um, you know, we're we're not in the five figures, but we're much higher than the two hundred. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> we're in the thousands of. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you know, it depends on what type of position and, and, yeah. and things like that. And for us, the the we do it if people are you know stick around for ninety days, then that's when that's when we pay that out. 
Yeah, I think that's a great um, experience share for our fellow culturists out there because, you know, if you're already going to pay a recruiter large sums of money, why not pay a larger amount to your employees in order to recruit, right? In order to be your recruiter in your voice. So with that, I'm going to switch gears just a little bit and go back before definition six. Sure. And I don't want you to name any names because I don't want to put you on the spot, but what was the uh, worst culture experience or most challenging culture experience you had that really, you know, stayed in your mind? At a high level, it's when, it's when culture does not, it's not consistent with in the company and with clients. And, th and th I, that's really difficult on your people and the growth of your organization. And it really drives me nuts if you have an internal culture and then you have, you know, you, you have put on a different mask when you're working with clients. And that goes back to the transparency we spoke yeah. about in a little bit. So that's one. Um, the other, and these these are kind of kind of related, but uh, I was been in some pretty toxic environments um, for two reasons. One, it was a kind of CYA, yeah. which is which is terrible. And the other is that where people were unwilling to get to move on from the bad apples, keep those in the basket and it, it ruins the bunch, right? Yeah. So letting go places where they don't let go of toxic employees fast yeah. enough. And then uh, CYA organizations yeah. stood out to you. And then the, the first one was... Uh, 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 oh, inconsistent the, cultures inconsistent, between right. what you do outside your walls and inside your walls. Yeah, so you're right. you're perceived one way externally, but then you turn around and do something yeah. completely opposite internally. Yeah, if you if you preach respect, then you know when you're in front of the client, you know I shouldn't walk over somebody because you know and you know and show how smart I am in a pitch room, right? right. Like that doesn't make that's not that's not respectful, right? And so you should have a very consistent culture. Uh, everywhere that everywhere that you are with your company. Yeah, most definitely. So in your organization, we talked about, you know, doing great work in yeah. order to get awards. We talked about, uh, you know, having dogs in the office and how that actually enables some cross collaboration around departments. What are some other things that you like to call out that you just really enjoy about the culture at Definition 6? So uh, the the social things that we get we do together you know it's great and it, and it's fun the fact that everybody knows that it, it, it that it is a business and like culture is is part of what drives the business and so when when we're it's not just okay we we have a thing our hr group and a group of employees they form this thing called culture club yep and they define the four pe the four the four pillars that we're going to be and it's going to be you know social good social for fun social for learning and social to get to know each other right and the, those areas which really and the and in each one of them there's um there are just numerous examples that i that i could share that that we do whether it's going to a ball game whether it's um even there was a there was a happy hour that we did and somebody printed up these buttons and they were like, um, you know, one of them said, get shit done. And another one was, you know, support your team. And, and you had to like pick which ones and talk yeah. about, you know, and it wasn't, we just laid a bunch of buttons with words on the table and there it People goes. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> there, there, there you yeah. have it. Uh, they, those are, uh, they, those are some examples. Um, and so your people led culture that you mentioned earlier yeah. is, is heavily driven, I'm guessing by that culture crew from at least a, maybe a directionality perspective, obviously everybody's culture and ethos kind of comes into it as an organization. Who, is there somebody that leads that crew and kind of takes the initiative of making sure that, it, you know, they meet on a regular basis? Who leads that in the organization? Yeah, so our HR director does that and has partners, both with uh, marketing and other part, okay. part, parts of the business. And um, they're really, it's, it's, um, it's not top-down culture. Right. And yeah. so they facilitate to get people in the room. And we have a very, you know, passionate, enthusiastic group of people across our offices that are ready to go. I mean, I, I think at one point uh, we had to turn people down from being part of the culture club because <laughs> it was like, well, you know, if we're going to have so a 20, <laughs> if we're going to have a 20 person culture club, <laughs> it might as well be the culture event. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, and I, I think it's less about that. It's I, I think 
you need to be pur- purposeful about things that you're going to do. So, so you don't do too many and don't do too few, and you know th- th- those types of things, and to build that framework. Um, but uh, and that that's what the group is for, and they all go go out and get ideas. We do a, a fair amount of surveys with the company. Um, our communication with the company is, is very, we do uh, quarterly uh, meetings where we do important updates. But uh, the most important thing we do in those quarterly meetings is share work and um, share accomplishments of our people and our clients. Yeah, one of the things that we've shared in the past is, you know, to us, culture is not HR. Right. You know, it's, it's this mix of HR meets marketing. And then you also add in things like, you know, the culture club, which is almost the culture department. Uh, we always talk about, you know, in the future, we see culture titles being a role in organizations, culture departments becoming a department, much like engineering or development yeah. has become a department over the last 15 years. It would be this new thing. And the, the early parts of what we're seeing is the culture club. And it's somebody from every department really coming together to represent yeah. the business as a whole without leaving anybody else. So um, I guess that's a quick plug for us. We're going to do a, a culture club series coming up so we're nice. looking to interview people that are that are they can share you know the best and worst of their culture club how do they form it what do they do and we're looking forward to getting that kicked off because we're hearing it more and more and we're working with more and more culture clubs on those ideas yeah i think it's great as long as it's grounded in business and that it's 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 authentic yeah. and so my only my only fear in that area is that if you have a chief culture person or something like that that it's they're dictating its top-down culture. So as long as that that isn't the result of it, then I think giving your organization a framework and making sure you're tracking against business goals, diversity goals, all you know, um, you know, interaction. I, I one of the, the something that I really like to see is the we we have a, we've put a you know a couple different companies together. Right. And we have many different, uh, as I mentioned before, we have many different disciplines that we do in the organization. And I want all of our people and all of our clients to, to experience as much a definition six as, as, as they can. And so for me, a judge of that is when I'm on a call or in a meeting, how diverse is the room and how surprised am I by the people that are collaborating in that room or on that video call? Yeah, a lot of different ideas coming in and making sure that you're coming up with the best solution, yeah. the best product based on all of those ideas and that diverse set. Exactly. Yeah, love it. So with, um, I guess my last question for you is moving, you know, we're in the beginning of the new year. What are you most looking forward to enhancing from a culture perspective? I've, I've probably already talked about it too much. So I've, I've uh, showed my hand. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it, it's around, we do a pretty good job of sharing work with each other, but um, it's really taking that next step. And that's our passion, that's what we do. So the more, the faster that people can understand what is coming up, whether it's gonna be on a social channel or whether it's something that we can't share publicly that we're doing for, for a client, or it's gonna be on broadcast TV, for people to be able to experience what we're doing and the results as fast as possible so that they can be exposed to things that they can offer up to our clients and experience they can do if they want to have a change in career, if they, you know, all of those different opportunities. The, only, the best way to do that is by sharing your work product. Got it. And so we're looking for ways that we can do that. So just a better way to facilitate what's getting done, who it's getting done for, highlight that work, highlight the opportunities from it, disseminate all that information out so that everybody really knows what's going on in the organization. Exactly. Yeah, fantastic. That's because we no, none of our work is done by one individual. All a team. It's, yeah, it's 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 a it's a team of diverse individuals coming together to create great work and great results for our clients. Okay. I had one more question actually pop sure. into my head that I'd love to hear and it's going to help for our fellow culturists out there that are <laughs> that are acquiring teams and building teams. When you said, you know, you had multiple companies that were acquired and things like that come in, what was the most challenging uh, aspect of those cultures coming together that you know you really had to think through and work through? Like, what was something that you didn't think was going to come up? It became a conflict or a challenge, and you had to work through that. Yeah. So you always have the you always have the challenge of retaining 
the knowledge and the and and the leadership in those businesses is such a high value, but it has to be balanced that they're bought into the vision of the new entity. And some people are really good about that. And some people it's it's actually it's not even it's not even their fault. It's the people that are following them are so used to doing it one way and expect, Josh, you expect me to do X, Y, Z. I, I not only have to change the way I'm focused, I need to make sure that you understand that there's, there's a new direction and, and where we're going. And when that, doesn't, when that doesn't happen, that's really difficult. So looking for, for those areas and those, those opportunities uh, to do that uh, is, is, is definitely one area. Um, making sure that you come together on your hiring approach and mindset. So this group may have hired this way and look for this type of talent and this, you know, let's come up with, you know, some core things that we care about and values that we, we care about to make sure the entity is going to be in that area. Cause everybody's going to be a little, little bit different. And, um, some other areas are, I mean, I mean, I could talk about this forever. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of challenges. Yeah. Well, but, no, 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 but challenges, I mean, a lot but the of opportunities them, yeah. uh, with it is, uh, I mean, you know, um, learned a lot, which means I've made a lot of mistakes. Yeah. So what I heard from that was, you know, on a challenge side is all of them really sounded like an alignment, right? Yep. They, they've already set out their path for the year. You've set out your path and now you're coming together or they've set out their hiring process. You have a hiring process that has to come together. But yep. on the flip side, like you said, it's an opportunity at the end of the day because they may have done something a little bit better. Your process may have done something a little bit better and the merger of the two should be you know, a significant opportunity to hire better or have, um, you know, new directions and goals that are going to get you, you know, further along. And it goes back to transparency and communicating what, you know, where we're headed, right? Because, you know, it goes back to, well, we think we're going in that direction. We think we're going in that direction. If there's true transparency of what what we're trying to do and that's over communicated day in and, and day out, um, then, you know, we should be able to get people aligned where we're going. Yeah, then everybody knows where you're going. And then the other is just um, is, uh, is physical, physical space. And the fastest that you can, you know, you, that you can change the environment. Mm-hmm. So everybody's in a new and different place that's focused, sitting next to people that they didn't use to, to sit with. The fastest that you can, and it doesn't mean you have to move, um, I moved both locations of our company over the last four or five years, and but the the faster that you can just change that environment around, uh, I th- I think can have unbelievable un- unbelievably positive impact on the organization. Yeah, and is that change? It's really is the goal really to bring those two people or those two sets of people into a working group so that they're sitting side by side to build those relationships more quickly, and that's really the. The goal of the change or what are what are some of the other goals of that rapid change well you can uh, accomplish a lot of things one is that you know you just you hear different things right and so one you can bulk people together because they're like-minded doing like things and they're just more of them that you brought in from different companies right right or you can have and, and we've done both or you can have your full team of of different uh skill sets and individuals so where we have an account director and a creative director and a software developer and an analyst all sitting together in a pod. You I mean, that's a pretty diverse group of individuals, right? Definitely. That's a, that's one approach. And, and it kind of goes in phases or you can have your analytics group and your, you know, creative team and your software development team all and sitting in separate areas like minds, get to know each other and get the benefit from that. So for me, I, it, it really doesn't matter which way as long as she has a, have a strategy and it doesn't happen to you. Yeah, and it seems like there would be need to be a balance between the two because you know, there's a lot of organizations that say, okay, all the developers are here because they want this environment. But then, you know, at another point when they're doing something on a customer project, you got to build a kind of an ad hoc pod and yep. make sure they're working together. Classic for, war room. Yeah, war room, <laughs> but for a year because they're working on a large project. So yep. it's a balance between, you know, both sides. And, and I'm sure a lot of um, decisions to be made in how the office is structured for that. Yeah. As flexible as you can make it these days. Yeah, right? move everything around, make it movable. Yeah, absolutely. 
Well, thank you so much for being on the show. We yeah. appreciate it. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for joining us on the Epic Company Culture Podcast. This has been a Culture Champions episode with Jeff Katz of Definition 6. Please check us out on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. If you watch video, we have our YouTube channel. Feel free to put any information or questions in the comments, and we'll get right back to you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of the Epic Company Culture Podcast with Josh Sweeney. If you enjoyed this content, please subscribe on iTunes, SoundCloud, or Stitcher. For additional content and transcripts, visit epicculture.co. If you have questions or topics you would like us to address or expand on, tweet us at epicculture1 or email at podcast at epicculture.co.